Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Dia. I'm a photographer and content creator here in San Diego. And today I thought I would share with you guys my tiny home office. So if you follow me on Instagram or my YouTube shorts, you will have seen my two little videos that I made of my tiny home office and they did pretty well. So I decided to share with you guys what I purchased and why I decided to make myself a tiny home office. So first we need to backtrack a little. Before we moved here to San Diego, we had a five bedroom home in Temecula and it was beautiful and we loved it there, but my dream has always been to move closer to the beach and my husband's dream. So when we had two children left in the house, we decided that we would go ahead and downsize and move to San Diego. We ended up downsizing to a three bedroom apartment paying twice the rent, <laughs> but it's worth it because we're about a mile and a half away from the beach. It's worth it to us because we're about a mile and a half away from the beach and we love the beach. In that first apartment, it came with like a little nook area that we were able to use as our office. And at that time, my husband was working a full-time job with another company. So it was just me that needed a home office because I was the one mainly doing our photography business at that time. So it was all good. And then my son graduated from high school and went off to college. And when he did that, I turned his bedroom into my home office. And that was totally awesome. My husband ended up leaving his job and joining me with the photography business full time. So we both used that space as our home office. After being there for a while, we were just growing unhappy with the apartment complex itself. So we decided to move to another one and the one we moved into now is in the area that we want to eventually buy a home in. And the area is a little more expensive. So even though we're paying a little bit more in rent, we did downsize to a two bedroom apartment. And when I say downsize, it was more a downsize in rooms and not in square footage because these two apartments are probably about the same size, but this one has two master bedrooms basically. When we moved into this apartment, we first used the living room as our office. So we had a bedroom, my daughter had a bedroom. We had a little couch set up in the dining room and the entire living room was our home office and we had some pretty large desks in it and that worked out well until my daughter started to get a little bit older and had her first boyfriend and then we decided that we needed a space that she could come and watch tv and relax with you know her boyfriend or friends and we decided to go ahead and turn the living room into an official living room and put a couch and a tv and everything in it and we moved out our office into the dining room area, which was about half the size, but it was still fine. We worked it out and we worked in there for a while until she went off to college. So about a year and a half ago, my daughter went off to college and we had her room as our home office, which was totally awesome because she has a very spacious room. And I'll go ahead and put the video up here, but I just recently put some shelves up from Ikea that I really wanted. And when she said she was moving back home, I told her that they are not coming down because I waited a long time to put those up and they're finally up. So my daughter was gone for a year and a half at college and she decided that it wasn't the right path for her so she asked if she could come back home until she kind of figures things out and sees which direction she wants to go with her life. Of course we told her yes and we had to move out of her bedroom so that she can have that space back and I'll link that video above as well. That's when I came up with my little mobile office. We sold all of our large iMac computers and our desks and all of that and we both just started working on our laptops which was actually pretty cool because everything's in one space. I can pick up, move anywhere around the apartment and get work done. Or if we wanna travel somewhere, or go to a coffee shop, a brewery, whatever, I can take my whole office with me easily and get work done. When I was working at home, I was mainly working on the dining room table and that was kind of starting to not work for me anymore for a couple of reasons. One, I noticed that we weren't eating dinners at the dining room table anymore and that family dinner time is kind of really important to me. So I wanted to make sure we had that space back for that. And the other problem with working in the dining room is it's right next to 
my daughter's bedroom and we're very close. And anytime she pops her head out of the bedroom, we'll start talking and it just kind of breaks my workflow and I haven't been getting as much done lately. I just noticed I haven't been very consistent. And not only that, the washer and dryer is also out towards the dining room and the kitchen and it can just be so loud and distracting sometimes. And I just read the book Atomic Habits again and he talks about having one space for everything and it kind of made me think, you know what, when I'm home, I need a designated space to work at. So I kind of looked around my apartment and there is something in just about every corner of my apartment. And in order for me to fit a home office, something was just gonna have to go. My husband will usually work in the living room on the couch when he's home, which is another thing we revamped. We had to change that up a bit to make that a better little office space for him. He usually works out of the office, but when he is home, that's where he likes to work. So for myself, I thought about buying one of those little collapsible tables and setting it up in front of my little rocking chair near the slider doors. But then I kind of measured that out and realized I would be blocking that walkway a little bit too much. And I didn't want to have to be tearing down a table every day and putting it up every day either. So I kind of looked around and I thought, okay, maybe my bedroom because it's quiet in there. It tends to be a little warmer than the rest of the apartment. And of course, every corner of my bedroom is taken up with something too. So I decided to move into this little 40 inch space. I think it's about 40 inches. And I had my Monstera here. His name is Sully and the dog bed and a mirror and I moved him outside, moved the mirror somewhere else in the house and that left me with this little space to work with. Okay, that was a long story to share with you on why I have this tiny home office. It's temporary. We don't plan on staying here forever. We do want to buy a home. So I didn't want to invest too much money into this little space. And Ikea is so perfect for that. I feel like they have really good prices budget wise. So I hopped online, found what I wanted, went and got the desk. And then I kind of stepped back and thought, okay, this is just like very plain. So I decided I wanted to go get a few more items to kind of make it cute and make it mine. And that was a whole ordeal in itself. The power went out at Ikea and I basically went to Ikea three times in one day to finally have them open so that I can purchase the rest of what I needed. So anyway, okay, so let me go ahead and walk you guys through what I bought for my office. This little space, like I said, I think I said it was 40 inches. I honestly think it's probably only about 35 inches and I needed to find a desk small enough and I kind of wanted it to have a drawer too. So I found the, I want to call it the mitt at Ikea, but I believe the sales associate there said the Mickey. So I think this is the Mickey and it is just over 28 by 19 inches and it has this little drawer here, which I wanted to be able to keep some of my office supplies in. It was fairly easy to build. I had to redo it a couple of times. So I didn't realize that this metal leg could go on either side because I didn't read the directions all the way through. And the first time I started to build this, I put it together and then went, oh shoot, I did it on the wrong side. So I reversed it. And then once I put the desk all together, I realized, wait a minute, I liked the leg better on that side and that's actually an option. So I took it apart and put it back together again to have it where the metal leg would be on the left hand side and the wood panel leg thing on the right hand side. I've been building Ikea furniture forever so I'm very familiar with how their stuff is built so it's really not that hard. I just was trying to record and not really paying attention at the same time. I did build it all by myself though and I love it. It's not the most sturdy desk that there is but it's just for my laptop and for me to write on so it's all good. And then before I get into kind of the decor behind me, I was going to purchase a new chair. I think it's their Tobias chair. It's like a clear chair. I kind of really wanted it, but like I said, this is just a temporary space and I didn't want to invest too much into it. So I decided to take one of my chairs from the dining room and bring it over here. There's only three of us living here right now. So if somebody comes over, we'll just move the chair back over there. But other than that, it just stays in here for now. 
So we'll start at the top and move our way down. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I went on Pinterest and kind of looked for some ideas. And when I saw the little hanging plant idea, I fell in love with it. This is a very small white space and I thought the pop of color would look really pretty. So I bought this white hanging pot and this little plant to go inside of it. I didn't want to put a real plant in there because I didn't want to have to climb up on the chair and pull it down and water it. So I just decided to get a fake one and I felt like this was the cutest fake one they had that looked the most realistic. I'm not gonna try to pronounce the names of these items, so I'll go ahead and put links to them down below and include screenshots of what they are for you guys. Next is this pegboard. I thought about getting like a push pin pegboard, but I wanted something that I could put little shelves onto. Then I also thought about putting shelves, but I just wasn't really finding what I wanted. I didn't want anything that was going to stick out too far either. So I found this white pegboard from Ikea and it comes in several different sizes. This is the smallest size that it comes in, which is a little over 14 inches by 22 inches. And then you can buy whatever kind of configuration that you want for it. I went ahead and purchased a long shelf, kind of like a little bucket shelf for my pens, and then just two clips so that I can clip important papers onto it so that I don't forget about them. I never put important papers in a drawer because they disappear when you do that. So I like to have them front and center so that I don't forget about them. And I love this little long shelf because I put my little date stamp in it, post-its, and my Canon Ivy so that when I'm doing journaling, the stuff I use most often is just right there. I had a lamp from Stella Lighting in here, which I love because it's a bright light, but the base of it was a little bit too big, and this isn't a very big desk, so it was taking up too much space on my desk. So I decided to get a smaller light, and I decided on this one that has like this little strip light. To be honest with you, I don't love it because the lighting is a little bit too direct. So I have it on my right hand side. So if I'm writing at night, it casts a shadow against my hand onto my paper, which can make it hard to write because my planner has very light grid lines in it. So yeah, I don't know if I would recommend this light if you need like a good even light source, but it's really cute and it fit right here really well. And because it has like a little triangle shape at the bottom, it goes around this little hole in my desk, which is another thing. I really don't care for this hole in my desk. I know that you're supposed to be able to run wires down it, but I would have rather had that be a solid surface than a big hole. I saw that some people sell like a little plastic piece that will cover it. I don't know if I'm gonna invest in that or thought about putting a little potted plant in it too, but we'll see. And then in my drawers, I just went ahead and grabbed some little trays and baskets from around my apartment and put them in here. I just have a little space for my planner stickers, my little cutter. I'll also stick my mouse and my mouse pad in here when I'm not using it. And that's about it. I also keep my Andar bag. I love this bag. My computer, my planner, everything fits in here. So I do have that sitting right next to me just in case I need to pull out any of my plugs or anything. But yeah, that's it, I guess. This is my little home office. I cannot wait to have an entire room to myself again as a home office. I feel very lucky to have found this little space and been able to set it up because it's really cute and my bed is right there. So actually when I wake up in the morning and I go bed at night and I glance over at this little corner, it makes me happy. So that's good. If you're trying to set up a tiny space for yourself, I hope you found some inspiration in this and maybe a few ideas. If you guys have any questions about anything, go ahead and leave it down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. If you wanna see more from me, be sure to subscribe. And if you wanna be notified whenever I post a new video, make sure you hit that notification bell. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.